Hello friends, I'm George, the nice medic gentleman. Welcome back to the channel guys, I hope that all of you are doing well. Today's video is going to be about good scents that actually, that uh, unfortunately don't uh, perform very well. Today I'm going to show you 8 fragrances from my collection, most of them are clones that do a very good job at copying the original fragrances that they're copying, but unfortunately have subpar performance. Now again, I don't want to bash on the fragrances that I'm going to show you in today's video. I just want to give you a heads up uh, in, uh, you know, in order to be aware what to expect out of uh, all eight scents that I'm going to show you today. And uh, just one uh, other thing that I wanted to add is the fact that uh, not all of them have bad performance when it comes to longevity on skin. Some of them have, uh, you know, weaker projection and that, in my opinion, just qualifies again under the subpar performance uh, sort of rating that I'm giving them. The first fragrance that I'm going to show you in today's video comes from the house of Grand Dior and it's called Iconic New It Per Ohm. Now, I've shot uh, this fragrance before, I've uh, reviewed this one, uh, you know, I've... Uh, Actually, it's been a member of, uh, you know, part of a fragrance battle as well. This fragrance, for those who don't know, is a clone of uh, YSL Lanoi Delon Blue Electric. And actually, as a scent on its own, as a clone of uh, Lanoi Delon Blue Electric, it's done really, really nicely and probably is the closest thing in my collection to the original fragrance. You get very nice packaging, very high quality bottle, you get a magnetic cap, you know, the scent is super, super close to the original fragrance. You get that uh, very uh, sort of a bright and uh, fresh opening with uh, that ginger note that the original fragrance has. This also has it. Uh, then on the dry down, you get that oozy mix, uh, mix of the oozy notes of the creamy lavender, of the cardamom. As a scent, it's really, really nice. And uh, the, the problem that I have with this fragrance is the total performance. This thing has been lasting on my skin and uh, clothes combined, you know, for about six to six and a half hours, which is even slightly, you know, uh, less than what the original fragrance is giving me. The initial projection also is pretty strong, but uh, after about one hour, it starts to very uh, quickly become a sort of a skin scent. The next two scents that I'm going to show you will be from the House of Armaf. And the first one is from the Odyssey line of fragrances and it's called Odyssey Mega Limited Edition. This fragrance, for those who don't know, is a clone of uh, YSL YEDP. And again, as a clone, as a scent uh, on its own, it's really, really nicely done. It's super close to the original fragrance. In my opinion, probably the best clone of uh, why EDP that I've tried and I own. So Armaf have done a very good job at copying the original fragrance. You get that very likable, fruity, sweet, uh, slightly spicy, you know, woodsy scent profile. That's super versatile, super likable. It's a compliment getter. It works all year round. Uh, although not one of my personal favorites, but still I cannot deny the fact that the original scent just works, uh, you know, and people like it. And again, Armaf have done a very good job at copying the original fragrance, you know, the scent. But the performance here has been absolute horrid, absolutely horrid uh, in my experience. I've had this bottle for, you know, almost two years now, uh, you know, more than a year and a half. And unfortunately, you know, I was waiting for this to sit around and macerate and maybe sort of, uh, you know, get better when it comes to performance. But unfortunately, even, you know, an year and a half, almost two years down the road since I've had this, acquired this fragrance, the performance uh, has remained very weak. The total performance that I've been getting out of this fragrance is about 5 hours, maybe slightly over 5 hours, with decent projection in the first about 1 hour. And the second Armaf fragrance that I'm going to show you in this video is called Armaf Radical, or some places called this Armaf Radical Brown. Now, I just want to mention something, unlike the previous Armaf fragrance that I showed you, I really like this one. I like the original sense that this is a sort of a hybridly cloning, and I like uh, the creation of Armaf. It's really, really nice uh, fragrance. It's a sort of a hybrid clone between uh, Lom Ideal and uh, Parfum de Marlis Herod. You get that uh, sweet, su uh, sweet, spicy, tobacco-based fragrance that has uh, quite a lot of sweetness. There's some, uh, you know, uh, also spiciness. There's a strong cinnamon note in here, maybe a slight boozy note, uh, very strong tobacco note, quite a lot of amber and vanilla sweetness. It's very, very, uh, you know, likable fragrance. I absolutely love the scent. Performance, here the, here the problem with the performance is not so much with the total longevity on skin. I get about 7 hours of performance, which in my opinion is uh, 
above average but where this lacks is the projection it's more of a soft type of scent more of an intimate type of a fragrance and that's the main problem with radical brown apart from that this is really cheap uh, as i said has decent longevity on skin has a very likable scent profile great for the cold weather the next few scents that i'm going to show in this video today all come from the house of a fragrance world and the first one is called starman nebula one of the first uh, sort of an fragrance world scents that actually became popular you know a couple of few years ago and this fragrance is a clone of Mugler's uh, Pure Mode. It's really really sort of nicely done. This fragrance was one of those uh, scents that really needed to macerate before they reached their full potential especially when it comes to the scent profile. As a scent, as a clone, as a scent on its own, as a clone of a uh, Pure Mode it's actually done very very nicely after some maceration it became quite close to the original fragrance you get that fruity uh, slightly slightly sweet fruity opening that has a nice boozy note uh, sort of a dark scent uh, on the dry down you get the coffee the woodsy note uh, becomes quite darker a very masculine fragrance that uh, i absolutely love i love the original scent uh, and i really like what uh, fragrance world have done with starman nebula you know scent wise the problem with this fragrance is the performance. Initially when I got this it was really weak when it comes to longevity and when it comes to projection. Now, you know, with 6, 7, 8 months of maceration this fragrance actually became uh, quite a lot better. The scent profile improved, it became closer to the original fragrance scent wise. The performance also improved. Um, nowadays this gives me about 6, 6.5 hours of uh, performance on skin but again it lacks a little bit when it comes to projection. The next one that I'm going to talk about uh, again comes from comes from Fragrance World and it's called La Uno Million Elixir and this as you can probably tell by the name is a clone of One Million Elixir from Paco Rabanne and again as a scent it's actually done uh, very very nicely you get that uh, one million you know that uh, typical uh, signature one million sweetness with this fragrance you get that uh, sort of an apple sweet apple note in the opening green apple note in the opening on the dry down you get a bit of the rose um, you get some of the uh, some of the woodsy notes you know the cedar wood quite a lot of vanilla and tonka bean sweetness as a scent and as a clone this actually is done really really nicely and i think it's very close to the original fragrance but where this is disappointing uh, is the performance and I'm here I'm talking both about uh, longevity and projection. So far I've not done a full review of this fragrance but so far this in my testing has been giving me about 6 hours of performance uh, which compared to the original fragrance uh, is not really that good. And the, the other you know, way that this has been disappointing for me has been the projection. I can, you know, I can forgive the 6 hours on skin because this is a cheap, cheap scent and it's close to the original fragrance but where this seriously lacks is the projection. It's more of an intimate projection for about one hour and then it becomes really close to the skin scent. And the last fragrance world scent that I'm going to show you in this video today comes from, actually comes from one of their sub brands that's called Atur Al Alam and the fragrance itself is called Ishkat Al Layu Forever. And this is one of the biggest disappointments in this video today and I'm going to tell you in a second why that's the case. First of all, this fragrance is a clone of a stronger with you oud. A, uh, you know, a, a wood based fragrance uh, that's done in a very designer level. I like the original fragrance, actually like it quite a lot. And uh, Ishkat Al Lil Forever actually does a very, very good job at copying the original scent. It's super, super close. You get that very sweet, uh, you know, uh, stronger with your signature scent profile that has lots of vanilla, lots of ambery sweetness, you know, a touch of lavender and uh, you know a touch of uh, a wood an agar wood note and a bit of leather as well very very accurate when it comes to the actual uh, you know uh, scent of the original fragrance how good of a job uh, fragrance world have done with copying the scent i really like it but again very disappointing when it comes to uh, performance i've been getting about six hours of performance out of this fragrance maybe slightly over six hours but this really lacks when it comes to projection the next fragrance that i'm going to show you that i'm going to talk about in this video comes from the house of mason alhambra and it's called jorge di profumo and this one as you can probably tell is a clone of uh, aqua di Gio profumo and it's a pretty decent clone of aqua di Gio profumo 
It's not super accurate, it lacks a bit of that incensive vibes that you get out of the original fragrance, uh, but other than that, uh, you know, apart from that, it's quite close. You get a bright citrusy opening uh, with a hint of spiciness, you know, black pepper, and then the dry down, you get the oudsy notes, the sandal oud, quite a lot of musk, uh, you know, a very sort of unlikable, easy to wear, and uh, very famous scent profile. It carries pretty much the same, it's that famous scent profile of the original fragrances from the Aqua Di Gio line from Armani. Very, very nicely done, very likable, very easy to wear, very versatile and uh, especially for the warmer months of the year. But where this lacks, in my opinion, is the performance. And the last fragrance that I'm going to talk about in today's video is probably the biggest disappointment for me and that's down to one fact. And that, that's the reason that is, is the fact that it's a clone of uh, one of my most favorite, uh, all time most favorite, uh, you know, men's scents. The original fragrance is called Dior Homme Intense and the clone from Mason Alhambra comes from Mason Alhambra and it's called Dark Door Intense. To my opinion, to this day, from what I've tried and nowadays I have uh, like almost 10 clones for, of Dior Homme Intense in my collection. You know, scent-wise, Dark Door Intense is probably the closest thing that you can get to the original fragrance. Very, very close to the original, very accurate. You get the uh, that very strong iris note in this fragrance, very powdery, very makeup-y uh, iris uh, that has quite a lot of musks, you know, umbread, has the sweet pure note, a bit of lavender freshness, quite a lot of um, woodsy uh, notes on the dry down, you know, the cedar wood. Uh, the original fragrance, as I said, is an absolute favorite of mine. And uh, Mason Alhambra have done a really good job at copying the original fragrance. It's super, super close, especially in the opening. But just lacks the performance. It lacks the intensity of the original fragrance and it lacks the you know the projection and the staying power. Now the staying power on skin is not that bad about six six and a half hours which is not like super super bad but where this seriously seriously lacks is the projection. And so guys in today's video I showed you a total of eight scents from my collection that uh, I think scent wise are very very good but unfortunately lack the performance. I hope that you found this video interesting, if you did, give it a like, and I also hope that you're going to join me in the next one. And until then, stay safe and bye-bye.